Alright, hi YouTube. Coming on to make a pregnancy and life update. Today I'm 22 weeks and 4 days pregnant. Um, my last video was the gender reveal, of course. And we found out, well, we all, yeah, with me, found out that I'm having a baby girl. Really excited about that. Um, the only things like that have really changed is Friday night on the 11th of September. I ended up going to the ER because I was having some discharge and then a very bad cramping. I didn't know what the cramping was and I have a family history of preterm labor that usually starts around 22, 23 weeks before viability, which is 24 weeks. So I got really scared Friday around like 5 o'clock. So so my mom, um, I'm going to drive to the ER and you could take the car back home. She rode with me. Um, I was checked into labor and delivery, which I was very shocked because I thought I had to be at least 20, 30 weeks to go to labor and delivery, but no. So um, I was checked into the triage room at the hospital I'll be delivering at. And um, they hooked me up uh, right away. I did a urine sample. They hooked me up to a machine. Um that monitored the baby's heartbeat, the heartbeat machine, and I heard the baby's heartbeat right away, she was fine, but I'm freaking out, because I think something's going on, like my cervix is shortening, I thought it was, and all that, well, I got there, and I was checked in at 6, and um, I was just discharged by 10.45 p.m., so same night, discharge was not admitted the baby was fine I got an ultrasound and um, the, the tech actually let me see the um, pelvic ultrasound part um, but she wouldn't let me see it when she did the transvaginal so with the pelvic I saw the baby bouncing around uh, she wouldn't sit still and uh, it was it was fine what turned out to be the problem was I have hypertension which is not shocking. I need to keep an eye on it uh, so that doesn't turn into preeclampsia and then, you know, of course, eclampsia where you stroke out and pretty much are on death's door. So, I mean, that's what happened. And I was um, 22 weeks and one day and she measured right on time. I saw, like they, she, the tech showed me the baby's measurements. She was 23 weeks and one day. So, the baby's absolutely fine. I think, like, the problem that is happening is I'm the one with like a lot of nerves and anxiety <laughs> and so like it makes you into one like um very nerve wracked mommy to be and there are other ladies in there I would think I was like the only one who's still in the 20 weeks there's a lady next to me because everyone talks so loudly inside the labor and delivery triage. She has 40 weeks plus 3 days and I felt really bad. She looked very young and she looked like she was just ready to go home. But her mom said, no, you guys, we can't leave until this baby's here. So I'm just like, oh my God, that'll be me in a few, um, few weeks. So they sent me home with paperwork about um, hypertension in during pregnancy. And the doctor, <clears throat> which will probably be the doctor that delivers me, she said that um, pretty much if my blood pressure is at, like such and such high now, it's only going to get higher and higher. And I believe that would be another reason why I'll deliver in December and um, be induced. I already knew about the induction, but it's just like December is only three and a half months away, going on two months away. So there's not a lot of time to prepare for baby. Um, I haven't bought a crib. I don't have a um, car seat. None of the big stuff. I've mostly been buying clothes and diapers, wipes, diaper cream, baby bag. I have that. Um, socks, hats, uh, like the stuff that she'll need when she gets here. I mean, if push comes to shove, the baby can sleep next to me. I know some people don't like co-sleeping, but when um, my parents had us as newborns, we just slept in the bed with them, or we had a bassinet, but bassinets, I was looking at a few of them online, and they'll go up, they'll hold a baby up to 17 pounds, and I don't know how big she'll be when she's born, and how long it's going to take her to get to 17 pounds, but I anticipate she's going to be a big baby, and so, um, yeah, uh, while also having to watch my glucose, 
I'm going to have to watch my blood pressure. I, and then, too, with the blood pressure, um, they changed cuffs. They made it bigger. The cuff bigger on me, and my blood pressure started going down from there. But still, it's like, you know, just with me being plus size. In the first place, there's always concern with um, just watching the pressure. If I have any blurry vision, I need to go back and all that. So, um, trying to think what day it was. This past Tuesday... Hmm. Sorry, when was that? Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. When was that? The 8th, I had my regular OB appointment. She measured my stomach with a tape measure this time. That's never happened before. And I was telling her about how after my anatomy scan, I started having, like, really bad chest pains in my left side by my heart, and my arms started going numb. And I, I thought that, because it happened the day of my um, anatomy scan, and I thought I was having a stroke, but it went on for, like, up until my appointment for three weeks almost, so, like, it's not a heart attack, so I was doing some research, doctor googled it, and I, it came, kept coming up with carpal tunnel, and so I told the doctor my symptoms, like, my left arm keeps going numb, and my fingers feel funny, and she said, yep, you have pregnancy-induced carpal tunnel syndrome, it's in my left wrist only, and it's very common in pregnancy, there's no need to get surgery, it goes away right after you give birth, and I was just like, so this is another, so on top of the carpal tunnel, now I have hypertension, and it's, I'm getting really, really uncomfortable uh, with the baby, um, she kicks and kicks and kicks. Uh, I guess I can talk about that now. Just talk about the baby's movements are very strong. She's really active day and night. It doesn't really matter. Um, doesn't matter what I eat or don't eat. She's always kicking. And <laughs> within the last week, it's like she loves to rotate to my left hip. And I don't know if she's sticking her head there or a foot there. But whatever it is, the pain, it'll, it'll be like a lot of pain in my right lower hip and um, my right lower abdomen and by my hip and all of a sudden it'll go away i feel like oh this is a lot of relief then out of nowhere it's there again so i feel it now and it rotates to my lower back and then to my abdomen in the front and it's the baby like she likes to <laughs> she likes um, my belly button area too i've noticed that and she likes my hip my right hip she likes my belly button and to sit there and stay snuggled up <laughs> she's really hurting me at this point and i heard when you get further along the baby starts to kick you in your ribs but for right now it's just like the hip pain she's on my hip and it really really hurts and she'll kick it and she'll headbutt it and she'll punch at it at my hips and at my right side really and I'm just like oh ho, 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 wow a little fighter on me so um I I haven't gone a day without feeling her but you don't count your baby kicks until you get to 28 weeks which I'm going to be 28 weeks, I'm excited because I've been looking at this, I'll be 28 weeks, October 22nd, so again, it's um, September 14th, so we, we, we all, I only have um, really a month, like five weeks to go until I'm in at 28 weeks, and then I only have two more weeks to viability, and I mean, it's like she's, she controls the show, I get it, like she's in control, she's fine. Um, I just get worried that, you know, if I'm having cramps and stuff like that, something's wrong with her, but, you know, if it's something wrong with me, I could deal with it, if there's something wrong with the baby, I, I'll freak out, like, <laughs> it's really bad, you know, I have anxiety over her already, very protective, um, life update, besides the baby, I'm, well, I have a job at an elementary school, but it's a substitute position, and they haven't called me into work since the, end of August so I haven't been working for two and a half weeks and so um, I was there consistently for three weeks it was nice but I could already feel like I was getting very run down like I I don't have the energy that I used to and so when not having steady work and uh, my car is broken again like that I, I have a it, um, older car it's from the 90s and it just stays broken no matter how much money I put into it I've already put at least three thousand dollars into that car and I've uh, bought it for 500 so that should have been a sign but I was thinking cheap deal I'll just fix whatever needs to be fixed and keep going but um, with money not coming in as flu fluidly as it was before find a little bit of stress 
and anxiety within me. But, I mean, I'll persevere. There's not much else I can do. I'm still living with my parents, so that helps tremendously. So living with my parents, I'm safe, I'm fine. My parents understand the situation, and I pay what I can when I can. So it's like that, like, you know, we're really definitely not living high off the hog anymore, and I really don't want to. Um, oh, as far as, like, working, um, I'm not sure how I would be able to work right now because I'm sleeping all day. Like, I, I have to get 12 hours of sleep like a cat, you know, and I just don't know how I would, ma like, when I was working last month, um, I couldn't even stay awake. Like, I, it, just, it is getting worse and worse, and I'm taking my vitamins, vitamin D, 5,000 milligrams, vitamin, no, vitamin, prenatal, and um, iron. So I'm taking that every day in the afternoon, or before two, and still I can't stay awake. It's it's really bad. I think like I <laughs> got like a sleepy head. But um yeah, with the baby growing, she's getting much bigger. That's it's just pregnancy. Um what else? Uh life. Still single. Uh her dad could be involved if he wants to. I don't really like that's also getting to me too, like outside of um being a mom now, I'm a single woman, and so it would be nice to have a partner to share this with, like, you know, a guy, he could be sweet and, you know, help me set up the nursery, because pretty soon, like, um, I'll be setting up the nursery in November, yeah, that makes more sense than doing any sooner than that, at plus Black Friday sales, um, it would be nice to have this, like, experience to share with a guy who's willing and who cares, but who cares about the baby, a guy who cares, um, but if it's not going to happen, I can't force it. That's life. Shit happens. So, um, just taking it day by day, try not to let that get to me. But a lot of my anxiety I was having on Friday, I felt was related to her dad. And so I'm just like, well, there, I mean, there's no point in me ending up stroking out or having a heart attack or someone who really doesn't give a shit. Like, I mean, there's no point because she gets to have one mom and one dad and I mean if I go that's it so I can't be that self-centered and that's the other thing that changes when you have a baby you can't be self-centered like I can't just think about myself I have to think about her her well-being and what's gonna make her safe so yeah um it's been a while since I've made a very long update video like I said I'm 22 weeks and four days I'll be I'm 23 weeks Thursday and then 24 weeks um, next Thursday, so on, and then I have my ultrasound on September 25th to check the baby's profile because she wouldn't turn during my, um, uh, anatomy scan for a profile picture, so they'll give me a profile picture of her on the 25th, and then after that, I mean, really, it's, everything's winding down with this pregnancy, it's all, you know, I'm no longer, uh, she's no longer as big as a blueberry, she's big as a, spaghetti squash or something that I have on my what to, what to expect when you're expecting app. So she's a very, very big baby. And I do say, I'm sitting here rubbing my stomach. I was talking to her. That's like involuntary too. I always, it like annoyed me <laughs> when I was infertile and was trying to conceive and pregnant women would sit there and rub their stomach, but it's just involuntary. I just do it because it makes me more comfortable. Plus like it calms her down and it stops that kicking and the head buttoning in my freaking hip. Anyway, then we do a belly shot, and then I'll be it. Oh, oh, and I'm in college too. I'm taking an online class at a community college. It's just one. I can't go on campus. I figured I'd be too big by December to even be able to go on campus. Plus, I'll be having their finals, and I mean, if I go into labor before the 20th of December, I'd be screwed. So, all right, here we go. Belly shot. Let me push the chair out. So let's see. All right. Okay. That's all, baby. That's her. All that. Okay. All that. That's all, baby. And that's not. I'm just standing up the straight too. Okay. I'm standing up as straight as possible. Okay, that's better. So, yeah. It's 22 weeks, four days, and I feel big. <laughs> but that's pretty 
calling I've always been a big girl so yeah anyway thanks for watching like I said I wanted to make a long update haven't done that in a while I'll update after my next ultrasound and I'll have like her profile pics because she'll be bigger the doctor said and it'll be easier for them to get it so thanks for watching and uh, subscribe if you haven't